you wanna add multiple clients into one Google group, as long as you set your settings so that group members can't see other group members, it appears you're pretty safe from them seeing each other. How to set permissions on Google Workspace for clients? Can you hide group members' emails for privacy between customers? That's a good question. I think group members can see each other, but let's check if a group member can see another group member. Now groups as a service has gone through so many iterations over the years. It's a little bit hard to know where all the features of groups are because some of them are kind of been merged with organizational units. Some of them exist outside in a groups, dedicated group service, groups.google.com because some of them are kind of like public newsletter service, but that architecture has been kind of brought into Google Workspace. So you can use groups for so many things. You can use them for security and deploying apps as an organizational unit. You can use groups for a distribution email list if you just want an email list. You can use groups for locking down permissions in Google Drive. And you can use groups for a full-blown forum if you want, which can also almost act like a shared mailbox. So that's five things that you can use groups for. But anyway, let's have a look at this. Test uh, members. Cool, okay, so I'm gonna set up my group here. I may as well choose an owner and add myself in there. Okay, I'm gonna add security tag. I don't know really what that one does, but anyway. When we configure a group, we've got lots of different options here, right? You've got the ability to set different levels of access based on different permissions and different categories here. Now, considering the question, it appears that we can lock down who can view members to only group owners, which is pretty interesting. Changing that permission might be all that we need. And let's say only invited users and let's add people outside my organization. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a third party email address to simulate this effect. So I'm gonna add an email address which is out of my organization. Great. Okay, so we should have two group members here. And remember when you're working with groups, they take a while to update. There we go. Okay, so I appeared my owner account. Oh, there we go. Okay, wonderful, cool. So I've got my secondary account. It's on a different domain. Effectively, we're simulating what a customer would see. So first, let's open up the group as a group owner. So I'd go to groups.google.com. You can see there's lots of different groups that I am a part of here. And it was called test group members. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the group. Now this group's service is where you can see a log of all of the emails or groups calls them conversations that are here. You can see members in the group. So I can see the different members that have been added here. There's pending members and banned users. They're more of the like forumy type features that exist in the Google Groups service. But as an owner, I'm obviously gonna be able to see everything. Let's see what it looks like when I switch to my alternative account. Okay, so I can't see those, but oh, let's go to all groups. I guess it's probably not my group. Okay, so I can't see the group, which is which is odd. Let's see if I can search for test. Maybe I need to go and find that group. I know for security purposes, I don't have to accept an invitation or anything. Content unavailable. It's not showing me that group. I wonder if that's because I made it a security group here. I've got a feeling it might be stuck, but that's okay. Let's let's do a fresh test dash members two. So I'm not going to switch the security group setting on. We're going to say group members cannot view groups, other group members, right? There we go. And I'm gonna say only invited users and allow external users. And let's try adding my external user again. It's gonna take another minute to work. Oh, here we go, okay, cool. So test members two. Interestingly, it only says one member. Should have multiple members in there. Oh, just Peter at Moriarty.co. Maybe I need to also add myself in there too. So we've got the external third party member in there. This is simulating the client. Huh, interesting. Well, it's not showing up. I don't know if they need to do something special to join the group, but it's not really working at the moment. You know what I am curious about though, is can that person send an email to the group test message? So remember I said these act a little bit like a forum. And when I send that email, it's going to appear in the group as a message. So if I go to all groups, I go to test two, we should get a conversation starting here. There we go, conversations, there we go, cool, okay. So 
This is the external customer. They're able to interact with the group here. The only issue we don't we have is this group is not showing up for that person. So I suspect that the question this person has asked, can you hide group members' emails for privacy between customers? In this instance, it doesn't appear to be exposing their group membership, at least in the group's service. Where else might it show up? Well, it might show up on a calendar event, but I'm pretty certain this feature works as described and won't expose calendar event to other people. So let's jump on my calendar and I'm gonna put in a test event here. And in my test events, I can start to add groups. And if I add a group into a test event, I'm gonna grab the group email address and pop it in there. Yep, that's the one. Ah, here we go. You don't have permission to view the members list. Group members will receive an email but must add the event to their calendars manually. I can't see it because this one was actually set as a member of the group. Now, normally you would actually be an owner. If you're the person who set up the group, normally you'd be an owner. And so you have the ability to see the group. Just save that setting there. But when I create the event, let's go and send my invitations. I've received an invitation here. This is on the receiving side. You'll see I've got my alternative calendar here. I can see that there's a group that's been invited but I can't see the members of that group. I suspect it will be the same in Google Drive if something's shared. So if I set up a test in that Google Drive, if I go to members, I paste the group name, maybe even give them a notification. How about that? The group has now been added to the shared drive. I can access it with my primary account. Let's go to the simulated secondary account. I'm going to go to my shared drives, test group members, shared drive. I'll go ahead and open this, few members. It's gonna show me the group. If I hover over that group, I'm gonna try and open as much as I can. I just can't see anything to do with this group. So your results may vary. Your results may vary, but on this basis, it looks pretty clean if you wanna add multiple clients into one Google group. As long as you set your settings so that group members can't see other group members, it appears you're pretty safe from them seeing each other. Hashtag, I'm not a lawyer, and hashtag, your results may vary, but it looks pretty good. Test it out, let me know in the comments if you think this has worked for you or if you've got a better idea. If you liked this video, we've got plenty more on the channel covering this topic and much, much more.